Hey there, and welcome to a uh, follow-up tutorial on uh, the indicator spotlight that we did on the uh, C-score. So in this uh, little video, we'll uh, talk about uh, the uh, awesome oscillator setups, show how to uh, call the zero line cross, and then also how to set up uh, this uh, saucer setup uh, that I mentioned. And uh, then we'll move on to the C-score, looking at how to use that with the awesome oscillator to uh, condition the uh, entry and exit scenarios that I mentioned. All right, so let's uh, jump into the chart here and uh, just uh, add the indicators. I already have uh, Bloodhound added to this. So we'll find the uh, awesome oscillator and then add the C-score as well. Now with the C-score, we're going to be nesting the awesome oscillator. So we're gonna use that as a uh, input. Go in here and uh, grab the awesome oscillator as input value for the C-score. And then uh, we're gonna use the same look back as I did in the indicator spotlight. And we'll start here with the first standard deviation build the saucer setup. So I'll hit OK here and see what we get. OK, so we have uh, outside this first standard deviation here. Then we have a, a dip into the uh, new trend here. And so we're looking to identify an entry here or here. So we're looking for this these pauses here and then a continuation uh, to uh, locate saucer entry points, or what Bill, Bill Williams calls uh, the saucer setup. And then we want to avoid entries that uh, occur out here uh, once we're moving outside the first standard deviation of the uh, data points in the 100 look back period. All right, so uh, let's just start with the uh, most uh, basic signal here, the zero line cross. So we'll go for a crossover solver here. We'll put in the awesome oscillator. Go with the oscillator plot here and just use a fixed value here. And you see here already that we have what we're looking for here. The cross here is identified correctly. Um, and, and we need to name this as well. So I'm just gonna go for AO for awesome oscillator crossover. And then uh, for the, the saucer setup, um, as I mentioned, we want to first establish that the bars are all on the same side of the zero line. So we're gonna have a indicator comparison here, just making sure that uh, we're in a long short bias, depending on the oscillator values above or below the zero line. So indicator comparison here, <clears throat> add that. And then some oscillator of zero and below zero. We have the awesome oscillator as well here as input. And then we'll just uh, set the fixed value here to zero. And so we have bullish when values are above zero and bearish when values are below zero. So we'll just do a quick check here. Uh, let's uh, actually make the logic here first, name it for the zero line. And cross signal have that separated from the saucer setup. 
Okay, so that's one, and then we're going to make a new one. And we'll test this one here now. And here we see we have a bearish output when oscillator values are below and a bullish when they're moving above. And so the next now we're going to identify these um, pauses in the trend. So we've established a bullish trend here and then we're looking for at least two decreasing oscillator values and then that they accelerate and that the buying pressure here uh, comes back. And so to do that, we'll also have a indicator comparison. Uh, we'll uh, compare the oscillator value in the look back period with the displacements here. So we'll copy this and then we'll say, if we can start here with the uh, one oscillator value one bar ago, that needs to be smaller than the oscillator value of two bars ago. So we can maybe name this a little bit more intuitively. So call this pullback. And then here we already have the oscillator value entered. We're going to look at the value of one bar ago. Here we need to enter the awesome oscillator. and set that to two. And then for a long output, we want it to be smaller than the one for two, two bars ago. And for short, it needs to be bigger. And then we can do that for one bar further back. So you can see, you can play around with this and do this as many times you want. I just want to show you the mechanics of this here. So displacement two in this one and three for that one. And um, then also we need to create a solver for when the momentum comes back. So that will be continuation and in that case we have last bar higher than one before it and before we need to also modify these and then obviously Turn these around. So we can do a quick uh, check here again to see if uh, this is doing what we want it to do. Yeah, looks uh, to be working as expected here. We have a decrease, continuously decreasing values here and a increase on this bar. And this one, we don't have a output because the requirement here is a minimum of two decreasing bars, a minimum pause of two bars, which is what we see here. And then in the following here, I think we would want to eliminate this type of scenario here uh, where 
we're outside the first standard deviation. And uh, as you can see here, also coming in too late into the trend. Just see that this is working also for the short output. So here we have outside the minus one standard deviation. So we're looking to eliminate this. And then uh, these are pauses in the downtrend, continuation, pause and continuation. A pause here of one bar, which didn't get picked up because our requirement is that we need to see two of these pausing bars in order for the signal to fire. All right, so that brings us uh, into the C-score. I'll just move this up a little bit. And uh, the C-score is also going to be a indicator comparison. So we can copy this again, and then we can say a C-score of Uh, it's less than one for long. And uh, we have the awesome oscillator in here. We need to replace that now with the C-score. And then nest the awesome oscillator Okay, so the C-score is there. Get the awesome oscillator in here. And we want to adjust the look back here to 100. And for this, we want to use long only, uh, seeing that um, the short requirement will be minus one. And so we want this to be C score to be less than one. And so we can just null this out for short since we're not using it. And then we can copy this. A minus here. Want to be greater than that. And of course, we need to define the fixed value here. I forgot to do that. So I put in one here and minus one for the short. Modify here, short. And then greater than minus one. All right, so basically we want to have output here in the chart for this segment here and this segment here and we want to eliminate output for any c-score values that are above one or less than minus one all right so let's see if we got this set up correctly here put it into the logic board So it needs to be OR here. And then we also need to add a function node to isolate all the bars that have output in both directions. So you use the product function node for that. And let's hook this up. And success, we have output for these areas that are within the first standard deviation and eliminating these situations where we're above first standard deviation and below the minus one standard deviation here. All right, so uh, let's put all this together. And here we see we have output for these two early signals here. 
and we have eliminated the signal that we saw over here earlier. Likewise here, we had an output for this bar here, and that has also been eliminated here. All right, and then uh, we can um, simply use that logic for the exit conditions as well. Let's see here, we go in and uh, we can copy these and in that case have minus two here minus two one two and two and then so it's it uh, C score two. and uh, make the adjustment here as well for the chart. And so we want to create output in this area here and here, seeing that these are now set to give out give us uh, a pointer when the oscillator values are outside the second standard deviation band. So let's see if uh, we set this up correctly. In this case, of course, we want to have a short output here. And in that case, and for this one, when it's less than minus two, create a long output. Like so. See, we have that briefly here. There's a little dip below here, the second standard deviation. So we have the expected outcome here as well. All right, so I just uh, quickly want to also uh, talk a little bit about the um, zero lag oscillator because this is uh, a setup which is similar to the zero lag oscillator. And you can sort of replicate uh, the retracement uh, entries here. Uh, however, there are some features in the zero lag oscillator, which is one of our premium tools uh, that are quite uh, nice and uh, uh, can do some of the heavy lifting for you uh, when you are uh, making these strategies. So you see here, it's also uh, firing off signals Let's minimize this a little bit. I have a lot of information here on the chart now. So I almost don't see see the prices anymore here. Um, so we have a retracement uh, entry here. Uh, basically, uh, it's looking for a short-term oversold, not just a pause here in order to validate. And um, in this case, uh, we had a set up over, over um, sold in the uptrend, but uh, we did not um, get the signal here. 
which turned out to be good because there is a fall off in momentum here. I think that's uh, the filter that's taking out the signal. There's a bunch of uh, settings here. Uh, this is a secondary retracement because the requirement for the key retracement has not been met. Key retracement needs to occur within the first 12 bars here. And uh, this looks to be the momentum filter that's uh, taking out this, this signal here. Otherwise we would have had a signal here. Um, it can also be the divergence filter here. Yeah, it's a divergence and momentum filter that are uh, eliminating these signals here. As we see, we also have momentum signals. Momentum signals are also looking at uh, the previous uh, consolidation period here. So you want to break the high of the previous uh, 10 bars here. Uh, so a lot of uh, built-in options uh, in the zero lag oscillator that can uh, do the heavy lifting uh, for you uh, when uh, you're looking at creating a strategy that is uh, based on trend entries, cutting into the early trend here for a nice retracement setup here. So you'd set the stop underneath this one. And also we see that these later signals here are completely eliminated, uh, which is also a good thing. I think we have the uh, threshold values here. So this is also a normalized um, oscillator. So uh, late trend entries and uh, when the trend is likely topped out, which is what I mentioned earlier, the scenario here, and um, then there is a supply and demand filter. So if this pause is waiting for too long before the buyers come back in, then uh, these setups are invalidated, which is what happened in this scenario here. Alrighty, so that is uh, pretty much it for this uh, tutorial, I think. I uh, hope it's been uh, of value to you. Not as uh, tight and well organized as I usually have it, but that's uh, the nature of a uh, presentation where you do the things as you as you go here. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions uh, for me, feel free to reach out um, via our contact form at Lizard Indicators or at uh, info at lizardindicators.com. Be happy to hear from you. Until the next time. Take care and bye-bye.